Well, hello. Um, part two of my K1600 GT um, overview. Uh, as mentioned in the prior video, if you watched it, this particular video is just going to touch upon the features of the 1600. Um, what's standard, what's optional here in Canada anyway. And then uh, my sort of take on the, uh, on the effectiveness of each feature because quite often manufacturers will um, put features on bikes that are completely gimmicky and useless and end up just sophisticating an otherwise good bike, over sophisticating an otherwise good bike or uh, promising something that doesn't deliver which can cause uh, buyer remorse. However, for the most part, every feature I've come across on this thing has worked exactly as promised or better. So I have no complaints with any of these features. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, I'll start at the front of the bike, work our way around. Some of these things are standard, some are optional, and some have been standard on other BMW bikes. So I'll try to touch upon everything other than the fundamental bike itself, which I've already touched upon in the prior video. So up front, the biggest gizmo on this bike, um, aside from the engine, is uh, the biggest breakthrough is this what they call adaptive xenon headlamp, okay? So the K1300 here, which I'll turn this on real quick, the K1300 comes with uh, three lights across the front. The two outer lights who have these, uh, these LED, obviously LED light rings, like a BMW car I guess, these two outer lights are actually the high beams, okay? So they come on and they're very bright. There we go. The center light, there we go, is the low beam. And that is also the adaptive portion of this lighting system. So when you're driving along like this at night, you get your center low beam and you get these two light rings operating just as running lights, okay? There's no running lights down here. These are the blinkers, which I'll show you in just a second. Actually, I'll turn those on right now, okay? There we go. So now, how this works is, this adaptive light is, the light itself is actually located down in the nose and shines upwards. It's actually a projector lensed uh, bulb or a light emitter, I guess, because it's technically not a bulb since it's one of those XID or HID lights, uh, xenon lights. It shoots up on a mirror, okay? The bulb unit rocks up and down and the mirror rocks back and forth. So one takes care of the x-axis, the other takes care of the y-axis. I tried this last night and it works brilliantly. It really, really does. I thought it would be a gimmick and uh, it turns out to, it's, uh, it's uncanny how much more confident you feel at night on a twisty country road where I live when you tip the bike into a corner and you instantly see where you're going as opposed to waiting for the lights to catch up. Unbeknownst to me, and I didn't realize I did this till last night, I would uh, instinctively turn on the high beam to get some lift out of my light when I'm leaned over to try to look into the turn. And this does all that for you. The, um, the low beam or the center, center light actually throws out a nice carpet of light. Covers about, I'd say 150 feet in front of you by about 100 feet wide area, swath, okay? And uh, the two outer beams are very, very, surprisingly very, narrowly focused. They really shoot way, way down the road a very narrow tunnel, but they really are much brighter than anything I've ever seen as far as high beams are con concerned for that long distance stuff. The color, I've never ridden a bike with, uh, with the xenon bulb, but the color is, um, is pleasant on the eyes. It actually replicates daylight on the road, so the light actually looks like dusk. Uh, the road actually looks like it's sitting at dusk, so it's very nice, very effective, and the lights are very good. These blinkers are very bright at night, they're bright even in here in the daylight, um, and they do catch attention and they look kind of neat, although that's a subjective feature, subjective thing. So that's the light. The uh, windshield, as I've already showed you, goes up and down with a switch on the bars, and I'll, go, I'll do the controls last, but the windshield goes up and down. This windshield, unlike other BMWs, will reset in the seated position when you turn the bike off. When you turn the bike back on, it will resume the last position you left when the bike was last running. And that's a nice feature, so almost like a memory function. Okay, so next up here is the front end. The front end on this bike obviously has ABS, there's the sensor. Um, and it has the, the, the latest version of BMW's telelever front end. And as I mentioned, this isn't a fork in the conventional sense. 
Um, this has a shock absorber up inside here, and there's almost like a tr uh, sort of a parallelogram type setup where the only f controls the fork does actually, or the, the fork unit as we'll call it, that controls the direction. The up and down is controlled by a suspension system inside the, inside, and underneath the chassis here. And that works very nice. It isolates, uh, it could almost entirely eliminates dive on under hard braking. Uh, it does reduce feel a little bit, but the trade-off um, for a big heavy bike like this on the dive is, is worth it. Okay, next up we have the uh, storage compartment and audio controls. Now, as you can see, this bike doesn't have audio controls, but if it did, part of the controls would be in these four slots right here. This here is a small compartment. It's not very big. You probably put your wallet in there, I guess. It has water drainage um, hole punch in the bottom. Um, and it's actually not direct, so you, can, you don't have to worry about water splashing into the compartment. So it's baffled. Um, there is a warning, and there's a warning sticker, and there's a warning sticker, warning um, uh, part of the owner's manual that says the temperature in here does rise a little bit. So you just got to be cognizant of that and uh, realize whatever you put in there could be subject to high heat. And there might even be uh, references as to how hot that gets inside the owner's manual. As you can see, it's a six cylinder. The uh, oil filter access is very nice. It's right here. And as we move towards the back here, and you can see, up here is the, uh, the heat control for the rear seat, the passenger seat. Uh, the heat control for the front seat is actually on the bars, and I'll show you that. It's actually in the control unit, uh, computer control unit. But for the rear here, you have two settings, high or low, and that's a standard option on this bike. Uh, back over to here, audio is an option, okay? That's, a, that's a, uh, it's an ordered option. I think it may be dealer accessor, it may be uh, able to buy it through a dealer after you purchase the bike, but I, I'm not sure about that. But that's, uh, that's an option. This is standard here, and of course, six cylinder. As you can see right here, this particular bike um, has the ESA, the Electronic Stability Adjustment um, option on it. That is an option. It's ESA 2, version 2 of that, of that system. Works exceptionally well, and it's probably the other second biggest feature, although that's been around for a few years now with BMW, but it's the second biggest, or the, perhaps the biggest, depending on who you are, selling feature of this bike. Um, if you had not ESA, there would be a preload adjustment on this cylinder right here, okay? Um, and uh, the, <laughs> this sounds silly, um, and you can't see it in the video here, but this bike also has a center stand. And I, it baffles me why other manufacturers don't see the value of a center stand. It it's, can't be that expensive. I can't imagine it being a huge engineering challenge to put on. Uh, perhaps it's just modern buyers don't see value in it and it's not a big issue. It's a big issue for me and I commend BMW to continually continue to, to offer that immensely helpful feature on their motorcycles. I think it's great. It keeps the bike upright. Uh, it's easy to work on this bike. In fact, this bike is so, is so um, easily balanced, I can actually lift the front end with one arm and, uh, or even have somebody lift the front end while I do work on the front of the bike. It's how well balanced that center uh, stand is. Great feature. Couple um, signature BMW uh, features. The bike has a, a shaft like I think every big board BMW has for a hundred years. But the shaft this year is on the, uh, the left hand side of the wheel. And I'm assuming that has something to do with uh, transmission placement and output. I'm assuming. Because every other BMW had the shaft on the other side to date. Until now. Um, Anyway, this particular shaft, I'm told, is more resilient than the, than the older version, which is the prior uh, whole family of bikes all operated on that same shaft drive, which uh, in 2005 was introduced and has proven to be um, not quite as reliable as I think BMW would, would have hoped. Um, I didn't have any problem with my RT. Uh, but the earlier versions of the RT, the 05 and 06 model, uh, did were subject to some uh, some shaft failures, some final drive failures, as they refer. It's not the shaft itself; it's actually the final drive. Um, and uh, I know I worked on an LT here, uh, 2004 LT, a few weeks ago, and it had three sh three final drive replacements, and they were very very expensive. They were three thousand dollars a pop. This one, I'm told, is more is more robust. 
But what I just wanted to show you is this bike has central locking system. And I, I think I showed that in the video last night. Um, however, uh, it's an option and it's also packaged up with an alarm system. Okay, So this bike has an alarm system using the key fob by pressing lock. Pressing lock a second time, you'll hear a beep and you get your alarm system. Great feature, especially considering you have two storage boxes, one of which I just showed you, two saddlebags, a seat lock, um, and if I had a trunk, I'd have another lock there to hit one button, lock the whole whole bunch of them. is uh, is a, a great feature, very very uh, appealing, uh, very convenient, and then to lock them all up with one button, equally so, it's great. BMW is still using this tried and true, and it's my favorite system in all these uh, locking and latching system on their saddlebags. So in, a, in the unlocked position, you press on the on the cylinder opens up a lever and this whole thing opens up. Okay? Inside they have uh, elastic, uh, elastic bags, elastic uh, retainer strap system. Okay? And it's spring load, there's a, a, actually an elastic loaded uh, release strap here. Okay? Closes right up, very slick. To, un to remove the saddle bag using the key, it's this simple. When you twist to release, the handle pops up, the handle pops up, the whole bag comes off. Very, very, very handy. And I'm telling you, they mastered it and everybody's copied it. And uh, they still don't do it quite as well as BMW. Pop back in, we're good to go. And that's on. Very, very nice system. And they, fortunately, um, in typical Teutonic fashion, they found a system that works and they've stuck with it. Great system. Around back, there's two things I want to show you. First of all, they have an LED set up for the lighting. They have an LED blinker, uh, turn indicators, an LED brake light, which obviously I can't hit now sitting back here. And they have these uh, LED light bar technology running lights along the back, three of them. They might be hard to see in the video, but um, they're similar to what BMW uses on their cars. Very effective. Um, BMW also introduced this year this unique... Um, yeah, it's still on. This unique wind deflection system on the back of the uh, of the bags, and what this does is what they were finding is that the tr the, the bags, such as on my RT, which had a pronounced convexivity, I guess, in the back, really, really dented in, uh, caused wind turbulence, which swung the dirt around onto the back of the the bike and onto the back of the passenger. So by putting this wind deflection, it's almost like a wing or uh, foil system. It draws air around back and reduces the sort of the turbulence back here, which in turn makes for a cleaner motorcycle. Great idea. These muffler systems here, you'll talk about some journalists will say that for power, BMW actually uh, employed a uh, six into six system. They didn't. I stuck my finger in there. They don't go anywhere. The only one that's active is the one in the middle. So these are for show. So shame on the journalists who didn't check that out. <laughs> Uh, on the side of the bike, the um, we'll call the right side of the bike, I guess, driver's side, as I erroneously, uh, or passenger side, I guess, as I would erroneously call it. The right side of the bike, there's two power outlets. There's one up here, and then we have one underneath the seat right here for the passenger, which is nice. Now, these are the smaller European cigarette lighter type plug-ins, so you can get an adapter for your heated vest, heated clothing, heated boots, gloves, whatever you are that's, that's, that needs a plug-in or some other unit. Uh, you can use them whatever you want. They also have here, you can see it, a, uh, since this bike was wired up, and you can see the temperature warning there, this one has a, uh, an iPod plug-in which comes standard. This bike um, has every option you can get on it except for one, and that is the audio system slash Bluetooth setup. Okay? So that is everything else. And in order to have GPS, which it, it the unit's not in it, but it's wired for it, in order to have GPS, you have to buy the wiring, the pre-wire for the audio system. Even though you don't buy the audio system, you need to do that to get the GPS wiring in. And I think that's about a $500 option. Additionally, this bike has the ESA ESA system, and it has traction control system. Okay, those are options. And it has the, uh, as I talked about earlier, it has the central locking system and the alarm system, which are also packaged. So essentially on your packaging, you'll get... Um, 
what they call the safety package, which, which is the ESA system, traction control system, and the adaptive headlight system. Okay, that's all packaged in together. And ABS, those four things, sorry. In addition to that, you also have, this one has the uh, convenience uh, alarm slash uh, central locking system. And finally, it has the wiring for the GPS and audio. So those are the options this has. The final option, two options, would be audio and Bluetooth, which are packaged together. Okay? Uh, so that's how this one's equipped, and that's how the, everything else is standard. The heated seats, the heat bars, uh, the bags, the, uh, the engine, the, uh, you know, the, the board computer system. That's all standard, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Okay? Down here, back to this, this is your iPod plug-in. If I had the audio system, I could use this. This, I'm told, is actually still powered. So using that USB connector, I think I could hook my, if I wanted to, is put my cell phone in here and use that to charge my cell phone. However, there is a temperature warning, so I might take that warning to heart and not put anything in here. Who knows? Okay. One huge benefit um, to this bike, or one, one design uh, feature, which I really like, it has a dipstick. Okay? As opposed to a sight line, this has a dipstick. And the dipstick, just like every other BMW, you heat the, BM, you heat the bike up, let it run, bring it up to temperature, take it for a drive if you want, bring it back, let it sit for just a couple minutes, just enough to cool down to touch, then you check your oil. Okay? Fortunately, in addition to the dipstick, it actually has an oil check on the board computer, so it actually run a check for you via the computer. But uh, there's nothing beats a good old dipstick when you're, when you're unsure, when you're, you're afraid to trust the computer system. Great feature. So, um, in typical uh, industry and worldwide fashion, BMW has gone away, as I mentioned yesterday. Uh, some of their, their uh, which I saw as idiosyncratic as opposed to quirky, they had some strange controls. They've gone away with those and they've gone more mainstream. That's unfortunate. I always like that uniqueness that BMW had. Regardless, these do work very well. On the, uh, on the right bar here, you have three buttons. This button obviously only comes with the option. This is a central locking button. This button here is a, um, a what we we'll call a throttle mode button. Okay, so that basically controls the delivery of the power of the bike. This has a lot of power. And it comes in three modes. It comes in road, dynamic, and rain. Okay. Um, the, uh, the road version is conventional road driving. Dynamic is a little sportier, and rain is, uh, is reduced. You get all the power, just the delivery of that power becomes a little smooth, a little less intense, a little less explosive, which reduces the chance of, uh, of breaking uh, traction on your rear tire, and subsequently the front tire uh, as you go down. Uh, so pressing this button while you're driving, essentially what you do is you pull in the clutch, release the throttle, hit the, change the mode, and the mode will come up here on the screen. I'll show you the screen in a moment. And you can choose that mode, choose, release the throttle, and it goes into that mode. So it's on the fly, very quick. Okay, here's the stop. And now, now there's a start button built right into the kill switch. So when you want to start it, you hit that button there and it starts. And then there's this traditional stop. BMW used to have a toggle up here with a, with a start button. They've got done away with that. They've also done away with their, uh, their in my opinion, slightly more robust master uh, cylinder reservoirs. They've gone to these plastic or polycarbonate versions which are okay and they look sporty, but they're not quite as nice as the old solid aluminum ones with the solid cap. This bike has a throttle by wire. So the throttle seems gorgeously butter smooth and the reason being is because there's just a spring and, a, and, a, and an electronic rheostat of some sort in there. So there's no actual cable going down to the, to the uh, fuel bo throttle bodies and the fuel injection. So the throttle is just like butter and smooth. Very nice. Of course, the levers have breakaway cuts in case the bike goes over. It won't destroy the, uh, the uh, pivot up here. And they are completely adjustable right there. Now, if you can see this, um, BMW has uh, changed this switch block as, as well, in addition to the master cylinder I already spoke about. This button here controls the head of the windscreen toggle. They've gone to a conventional 
turn signal switch. Okay, so push to cancel. They are automatic canceling lights. That's a standard feature on this bike. So after about four seconds, uh, after driving straight after a turn, the lights will turn off on their own. Um, however, you can push them to cancel them quicker. Um, this here is your hazard light, okay? Which um, obviously, as we just saw, will stay on after you turn off the bike if you turn on four. This is cruise control, and the way being, this is a great system, and I'm glad they've kept this one. You push on to activate the cruise control, and push to set it, and pull back to re reset it if you've turned it off. And then when it's on, pushing goes faster, and of course pulling back goes slower. Very intuitive. The high beam, which would normally be here on a bike, is actually where the flash to pass button would be on, say, a Japanese bike. To hit high beam, you push the trigger forward, okay? And the flash to pass, you pull the trigger backwards, like you would on a Japanese bike. So there's, there's more of a, of a tang on that button, which you can't see in this video. Now you'll notice this here, and if you've been around BMWs in recent years, they have what, the, uh, what are colloquially called uh, wonder wheels. So this wonder wheel is almost like a, a selector for the computer screen when the bike is running. So you, you can zoom through a menu list by swinging this this wheel with your thumb. When you get the selection you want, it's detented, so it clicks, clicks, clicks. When you get the signal you want, you actually push right about here, right around the three o'clock position, and that activates that selection, okay? And horns down here. Once again, levers are adjustable. Now, if you, rec if you drive a BMW built since 2004, you'll recognize this rack. It's the same rack that BMW's been making, and it works brilliantly. So I have no complaints with this rack. In fact, if you have one of the old top cases on one of the uh, more recent BMWs, the big one or the small one, they'll clip into this. So it's the same system. This particular bike comes with a new top case as an option. Very expensive, about $1,600. Painted though to match the bike. And it clips in here and receives power from a jack underneath here to run a brake light if you want or a charging unit inside the top case. Very nice. And it too comes off and on, although not quite as easy as the old top case. There's not a lever system. You actually have to reach inside and twist a, uh, a large knob to release it. But otherwise, still a great system. Up front, the uh, good old fashioned antenna, because the bike was wired for the audio, the antenna automatically comes with that package. So if you see a bike going with an antenna, it doesn't mean it necessarily has audio, it just means it's wired for audio. So as you can see here, um, basically this is a, uh, a computer screen that comes standard on the bike. Um, showing the, the controls I showed you earlier, there's uh, next to the wonder wheel, which I, I'm, I'm assuming you saw, there is a, um, a menu button. And clicking that menu button brings up one of, I guess, six different menus. The first menu um, has the following. It'll check your fuel consumption. It has two options, two sort of intervals to check your fuel consumption. This thing's very fuel efficient, although I haven't been driving it hard. Um, the range till empty. Uh, the average speed, the ambient temperature right now is 22 degrees Celsius, which is about 75 Fahrenheit, the tire pressure, and of course, like the, uh, as you can see, the two lights flashing there, the ABS and tra traction control, and the tire pressure can only be reset and checked after the wheels have made a certain amount of revolutions, okay? So that's why you're not getting, you're seeing the two bar there, and there's nothing written down underneath the two wheels, okay? We have a stopwatch if you wanted travel times, and the date setting, uh, the oil level, this is where you check, and this too, has the bike has to be running at operating temperature, and has to have so many kilometers under its belt before it'll give you an okay or a problem. And that's all a little read, it'll give you either say okay, or check, okay? When you check, you have to pull over and manually check it using that dipstick I showed you earlier. And then off, all this means if you want this center screen to show nothing, that's what you'd click, okay? The next menu, sets your ESA, okay? And these here, just these particular settings, there's three, the first three are comfort, normal, and sport. That's the damping settings of your suspension. Do you want something soft, normal, and then sport, which is firmest of all? 
Next is your suspension preload. You want one driver, which is set, obviously, you can see. A driver and luggage, or a driver and passenger, okay? Next is your next menu, using the menu button, is handlebar heat. There's five settings. And as you can see, rolling this wheel and getting those different settings, way over in the upper uh, right-hand corner, you can see a little right red dot go on where the handlebars should be on that little drawing. That indicates that the handlebar warmers are on. Next menu is seat setting. And as I turn this up, again five settings, you'll see a little dot go underneath the helmet over on that little picture saying that the driver's seat heat is activated. When I turn on, as you can see, I turn on the passenger seat, there's a little red light that goes underneath the passenger side on that little drawing. Okay, so you'll always know if somebody has the heat on behind you. Next menu is uh, user settings. This can only be set when the bike's stopped and turned off. I can set my user preferences. And then there's sub-menu by pressing on that wonder wheel. There's languages. I can choose my language. Time format, 24 hour 12. Brightness of the screen. The start logo, do I want it to show the speed, which is, uh, uh, sorry, what, what do you want to show when it, when it pops up? What background? Do I want it to show the speed? Do you want it to just say a, a six logo, which is predominant over this bike? Uh, or do I want um, some other settings? There's three different settings. And then finally, factory settings. You can reset the whole system back. Okay, the menu, the menu bar to come turn back, it goes right back to the speedometer. Okay, so I have info, the different menus are info, ESA, handlebar heat, seat heat, and user settings. And then back to my speedometer. Okay, and you notice there's a speedometer here, and I also have the, the speed indicator there. That speed indicator is one of the settings I did myself. Over here you can see engine heat is the first bar, the second bar you can see which is actually showing some of the fuel level. Up here we have, um, this is ABS warning, this is traction control. Okay, now traction control, if you look up here, you'll see comfort written there. And over here you'll see dynamic. And the dynamic in rain and road, if you can see that, I'm not sure if it's blurry enough or clear enough, but you see road, dynamic, rain, any one of those. Those are the three settings you would, uh, you would put depending on the, the drive. And this is purely for the traction control, okay? And there we go. And we'll put it on dynamic. That's what I run with, okay? So, great bike. Um, all these features work great. And I can't say enough about, uh, uh, I guess I... I, I it's, it's turning into more than a test ride here because I am very, very impressed with this bike. But um, I haven't had any qualms yet other than things I mentioned last night. So hopefully that answered any questions you may have had. I know when I was looking at investigating this bike, just purely out of interest, I was very confused um, by, in my opinion, a website of BMW that didn't explain a lot. Pricing, options, what's standard, what's optional, all those sorts of things. Now, having this in my possession, talking with the dealer, um, I understand a little bit better. Anyway, until next time.